Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tinker Tools. Tonight we are going to be talking about who is the undisputed champion of Japanese impact drivers. So let's go ahead and get into that on Tinker with Tools. All right, so a few weeks ago, I actually introduced this, Hikoki's newest triple hammer impact driver. We compared it in that video to a bunch of different models from both Hikoki and Metabo HPT. And so today what I wanna do is I wanna address the other big question that I get anytime we talk about Metabo HPT or Hikoki. How does it compare to Makita? First, let's go ahead and talk about the two impact drivers we're gonna be featuring from Hikoki. So as I mentioned, we do have two different models. This is the prior generation of triple hammer bolt. And this one can actually be picked up under Metabo HPT at this point. It does bear the same model number. When they came out with the new WH36DD, this one is the one that is not currently available in the US market or North American market, I should say. Now, the differences are kind of subtle between these two. They do have all the same modes. They have the same speeds. The torque is going to be a bit different between these. This one is actually right around 1,900 inch-pounds of torque. This one is down sub-1,800 in the 1,700 inch-pounds of torque. Some of the impact drivers we're talking about tonight are not actually going to have sky-high torque figures like what you might see from Milwaukee or Flex, but they can still get a fair amount of work done as we'll show you tonight. Now the other thing you're going to notice between these two is the colors. These are not your typical Hikoki or Metabo HPT green. That's because one thing that is very common in the Japanese market is going to be a variety of different colors. A few of those colors are really easy to get your hands on one or two of them are a little bit harder to get your hands on, but I'll post what I know in the comments down below should you want to take a look at them. All right, now let's talk about the Makita impact drivers that we're going to be talking about today. We have two here. First up, this is going to be the newest impact driver from Makita that they offer today, and this is model TD173D. It's available on their LXT or 18 volt platform, and this one is not yet available in the States and has actually been out in Japan for quite some time, and we've yet to see it come out here. Now, this impact driver carried a couple of unique features that we're going to go over first off it has what is my opinion the best light on any impact driver on the market additionally this is the smallest impact driver we're going to talk about today and the, another thing that it gains is it actually moves the control panel around here to the rear where i find it a very actual and naturally ergonomic method when you're going to have the impact driver in one hand it's just kind of a natural place to have it now the other one we have from makita tonight is going to be the td002 their latest and greatest on their xgt platform once again though we do not have this model in the US. It does gain four LEDs, but not the full halo like we're seeing on this one. And it is a little bit of a bigger impact driver. The XGT tools are bigger in general than the MX than the LXT tools. This is definitely the heaviest tool by about 200 grams that we're going to test tonight. But when it comes down to the actual modes, the functionality of the tools is actually very similar. This one does gain 3,700 RPMs to this one's 3,600. And then this one has 4,600 impacts available to it, whereas this one's down at 38. This Makita is actually down under 1,600 inch-pounds for torque, whereas this one is actually up over 1,900 and has the most torque of any tool we're going to test tonight. Now, when it comes to what is similar between impact drivers, all of them are going to have what's called a JIS collet. It is a Japanese industrial standard design of collet, which is going to be deeper than your traditional American collet. It is designed to accept primarily these double-ended bits that are going to be very popular in the Japanese market under brands such as Vessel or Annex. And what that causes is when you're using a Japanese impact driver, you get very familiar feel to what you would get on an American impact driver using an American bit. But if you were to take the American bits and put them in the Japanese impact driver, because of that extra length inside the collet, the bit just does have more room to travel back and forth. Additionally, I have noticed that although there should be some pretty decent compatibility between bits i have noticed certain bits getting stuck or tr not even wanting to go in all four of these impact drivers to get around that one of the easiest ways is actually just to go towards using JIS style bits, which you can pick up on eBay. You can get them on Amazon. Pretty decent selection out there. Now I will tell you the quality on those bits is very nice. The price is not exactly dirt cheap, but additionally, you are not going to just be able to go into your local hardware store and replace them should one break. You are going to have to order them online. So with all four of these, that is going to be the collet that is going to be on them. Now something different about the collets is Makita actually has quick insert collet. The Hikoki is actually not a quick insert collet. Obviously taking them out, they're both going to have the same action, but I do really prefer to have a quick insert collet on there. 
Now, as I mentioned, some of the other similarities is typically speaking, I would say these are some of the smoother impact drivers that you are going to have on the market today. They are not going to be the biggest and fastest as I've kind of already alluded to. And so that is something that is very noticeable when you use the tools. Maybe in my experience, they're just a little bit more pleasant to use than some other impact drivers. And so if that's something that matters to you, these are all kind of great options that you could go with. Last, as I said, the colors is something that they kind of share in common. Really, does that make a difference in the tool? No, but aesthetically, there are some pretty neat designs in my opinion, and so that is something to consider there. All right, so then another difference is just going to be the battery voltage that these are gonna be running on. With Makita, you're either going to be on their 18 volt LXT platform or their 40 volt XGT platform. If you buy LXT tools, they're only compatible with LXT batteries. If you go ahead and buy XGT tools, they're only compatible with XGT batteries. When it comes to Metabo HPT and Hikoki, they run what's called their multi-volt system where all batteries are gonna be compatible with their 18 volt tools, but only multi-volt batteries are compatible with their 36 volt tools. All right, so now let's go ahead and run through the performance testing. We'll show you some specs comparison. So let's go through all of that and then we'll come back for some conclusions and some final thoughts.
I have not seen the performance times testing yet. I'll have included commentary on the screen of what I think about this times once I go ahead and edit that footage together. One thing that did stand out really easily in the testing was after going through the Hikoki impact drivers first and then moving on to the Makita's, the first screw that I drove with the Makita, there was just a different level of refinement with that Makita impact driver. It was significantly more smooth. It didn't transfer as much vibration through to my hand. Typically speaking, that is a quality that I would associate with Makita impact drivers. And I will always tell people that I feel like a Hikoki or Metabo HPT is about 90%. Now, when you're buying North American models and oftentimes getting really good pricing on Metabo HPT, that is something where getting 90% of the refinement, in my opinion, for let's say 50% of the price, that's something that I can really get behind. But when I'm paying almost dollar for dollar the same prices, that's where getting a little bit less doesn't make as much sense to me. Whether we're talking about the quick insert call it, the quick shift button that is going to be present on both of these impact drivers, if I go to the TD-173, I really like the placement of the control panel. And as we've talked about, the light is just superior to any of the other lights here. And so those features start to add up when you're using them back to back. Now that brings us to a key difference and something I want to point out with both of these impact drivers is impact drivers are the one tool that I've really tested where I don't feel like they benefit from a boost in voltage. You just don't see a huge performance benefit moving from the LXT going up to the XGT. And so that's just something that with the impact drivers, I don't think it's necessary for you to go with a 36 volt model. It's more of a convenience. If that's the platform you're gonna be on, there's an impact driver available to you and both of them are gonna be nice to use. One of the main questions I wanna to answer tonight then, is it worth it for you to go ahead and purchase Japanese impact drivers with some of the hoops that you have to jump through? And that's where I think it depends on what is going to matter to you and what's going to be important. If you don't necessarily care about having the latest and greatest technology or feature set in your tool, then I don't think it makes any sense for you to go out to there and get those. But if you are someone who wants to have the latest features and doesn't want to wait for these companies to get around to bringing them to the North American market, that's where I think it is something you can go and do. Now with the Makita Japanese impact drivers, those are actually made in Japan, unlike the North American counterparts, which are going to be made in China. But with Hikoki, it's not like you're getting a made in Japan tool. You are just getting a made in China tool with a different call it slapped on it. So I think it just comes down to what you value and what you want to be able to have on whether it's there. Now, when it comes down to who is the king of the Japanese impact drivers, if you haven't been able to tell from some of my comments already, I don't know if it necessarily won the performance testing, but Makita is the nicer impact driver to use. And I don't think necessarily just raw performance is why you're going with either one of these impact drivers. If you just want blazing power and speed, you're going to go with something else. But if you want sufficient power and speed and a nicer impact driver to use, I think that's where these four start to come into your picture in terms of what you're looking for. And for me, if that's what matters to you, it's definitely going to be on the Makita side of things. All right, so there is the comparison. If you disagree with me, go ahead and let me know down in the comments down below. If you had your pick of these four, I want to hear from you too. I want to know which one of the four you'd pick and why. Now, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you get notified when I put out a new video. And until next time, I'll catch you on Tinker with Tools.